Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Turbine Delivery Day. So we got our most recent order of Sweewin turbines and we have a monster in this box. So really excited to unbox this thing and uh, take a look at it and test it. So hang tight and we will open up this box and see what's inside. All right guys, so before we open this box up, um, if you are watching this video and you are on Facebook, uh, check out our uh, turbines, Sweetman Turbine group. I'll put a link down below in the description. And uh, it's just our place for the lighter side of RC to uh, share and answer questions about Sweetman Turbines. So in this box is a Sweetman 300 turbine. Now the plan for this turbine is for it to go in my Huracan, which we just built. So I put originally a 240 engine in the Huracan. Uh, I'm sure it would be fun and awesome, but we are at 3000 feet above sea level. We lose about 15 to 20% of thrust from our engines. So 300 is what's going in the aircraft. So. I haven't opened this box up yet. They just arrived along with my other part of my order. And uh, so I'll move you over here and we'll take a look at this. All right, so this is, whew. oh, the box is upside down. What the 300 looks like. Okay, so as per usual, you've got your quality control checklist for the 300 and 400 model. Uh, you've got the standard fuel tubing, so six mil, four mil, and <laughs> the monster. Wow. Uh, all the accessory items. Um, I'm not gonna weigh these things individually because on my previous videos, I have done that. I will list all the accessory items down below as far as their weights go. So we've got the, uh, the data terminal uh, we've got the standard cable setup. Uh, we've got the standard larger engine size fuel pump. So this comes on the 170s and up. And we've got a Pisco valve, a Festo fuel filter, which we will not be using. I don't, uh, don't recommend using these things. So we won't be using that guy. Uh, and we've got the data relay module which uh, is all normal stuff that comes with the Sweewin turbines. And the Monster. Wow. That is crazy. Okay, so let's yank this thing out and see what it looks like. So, standard Sweewin uh, Fair. Now this is a big engine, so I will, uh, I'll probably yank a 240 out of the box and we can put it side by side, but uh, um, this engine is significantly larger in case size, like I think 12 millimeters or so, than the 240 series engine. It's a little bit longer, most of the length is in the exhaust cone, but uh, just a big engine massive intake area. Uh, the FOD screen is all integrated. Beautiful. So one interesting thing that I have learned since my last Sweewin testing video. Now a couple things. Uh, Sweewin engines use outrunner brushless motors on their starter motors. Now one of the benefits of a uh, the brushless outrunner motors is they have more torque, more power than the enclosed motors. I think an in-runner motor is what they would be called. So that's one of the features of all the Sweewin engines is they all have a brushless uh, outrunner motor. And uh, on the 300 series engines, there are dual igniters on this engine as well too, which is really slick. So that is the, uh, the engine. Let's weigh this thing and see what it comes in at. Yeah, I'm excited to test this thing out. 
All right guys, so there is the difference between the engines. The very significant difference between these two engines as far as size goes. Uh, the 300 is just a bigger, obviously, size engine. Uh, most manufacturers, when you get up to 300 size engines, they are just significantly larger. So that's a picture of the back end. Um, and it's not huge, like you're talking about half an inch bigger on the case, but when you do that overall on the case, it makes a big difference, right? So uh, there's the back end of it. And there is the front side of the engine. So obviously very different intake size as well too between these two engines. Uh, this thing I believe only runs at uh, about 98,000 RPM I think is the max. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, yeah, awesome. Okay, so as far as weights go, uh, basically these two engines have the exact same accessories that go with the weight. So the 240, we have measured this before, but the 240 comes in at 1,805 grams. So 1,805 divided by 454 equals four pounds for the engine itself. Now, if you take a look at the 300, we are at 25, 20, oh, still adjusting, 25, 36 grams. Let's just zero this guy out and see. Okay, so 2570 grams. So 2570 divided by 454, 5.6 pounds of, uh, of weight. So we're talking about 1.6 pounds more on the 300. Now, as far as uh, stock thrust goes, uh, 300 Newtons, so that's 30 kilograms of thrust times 2.2 is 66 pounds of thrust in ideal conditions. The 240, so 24 kilograms times 2.2 52.8 pounds of thrust under ideal conditions, minus 66. So that's a difference of 13.2 pounds of thrust. So very significant difference in the amount of engine thrust. So if you're taking into account the extra dead weight you're carrying, you're getting about 10 pounds more push on this size of engine. Now, as far as fuel capacity goes, that's one of the myths, I guess, if you wanna call it that, that some people think about is um, bigger engine needs more fuel capacity. Yes, that is true, but you're also running this engine at a significantly lower RPM setting throughout the flight. So chances are this will actually be probably more fuel efficient than the 240 engine would be. So the 240 engine, we've or the 220, we've done tests before, and I can't remember the exact numbers of how much it used at full thrust. We'll also do our full, full thrust fuel consumption test on this engine. Now the Huracan, which this engine is going into, the stock tank carries 5.5 liters of fuel. That's the tank size in my aircraft. There is a smoke tank on there which carries about 1.2 liters maybe, I haven't measured that, but it, I'm gonna also use that for fuel. So we're gonna have about uh, six and a half, seven liters of fuel on that aircraft, which will be plenty. We should easily be able to get an eight or nine minute flight uh, by the end of tuning and everything. So really looking forward to having this engine in that aircraft. So let's get this thing bolted up. We're gonna head into the new shop. Even though it's not done, it's a better place for us to test these engines and uh, we'll have some fun with this thing. All right, guys, we are in the new shop, which is not done yet. So we're a bit of a ghetto setup here, but uh, we're gonna put the 300 on the test stand. Now, one of the cool things about the 300s is, uh, we'll talk about this on our closing remarks, is the spacing on the mount. So these outside holes are exactly the same uh, width-wise as like the 240 series. So when I go to put this in my aircraft that has a 240 in it now, uh, these, some of these holes are gonna line up as far as width goes, which is awesome. So uh, there should be no cutting of the engine rails, no sanding of the engine rails. This will just drop right in. So let's get this mounted on the test stand. 
All right, guys, so we are here uh, with everything set up. Now, this is just a temporary setup. When the shop is done, we're gonna have a beautiful, way better setup. So we're just making this safe. Uh, we put some wood on the test stand so we have somewhere to stand on to prevent this monster engine from blowing us away or the stand. So if you've watched the test stands or the tests of the turbines before, we kind of do a series of tests with these turbines. So the first thing is I've gone in and programmed everything to uh, where it would normally be uh, for the running parameters. So the first thing we do is we start the engine. That's going to be the normal thing. We let the idle stabilize. I think the idle's at 33,000 RPM. Yeah. Then we slowly go to max, and the max RPM is going to be 98,000 RPM. Now keep in mind with any of our numbers on the scale here, we are at through about 3,400 feet of elevation. Right now in the garage or in the shop, it's about 18 degrees. Um, so keep that in mind as well too. So this engine, this 300 series engine, should be putting out about 66 pounds at sea level, at 15 degrees, but a common comment in all the videos previously is, oh, it just, it's disappointing that the engine doesn't put out enough power. So keep that in mind as we go through this. We're gonna have another camera set up on the, the screen itself, and uh, we'll do that test. So then we'll do a, uh, a fuel test at full throttle. So you can see it on the screen there. Hanging right there is a one liter container of fuel. At one point, we'll go to full throttle. We'll turn the, uh, the fuel over to that fuel source. And then we'll set a timer and we'll see how long it takes for this engine to go through one liter of fuel. Um, when it runs out, We'll do the restart test as well too, because that'll be a great time to, to do that. Of course, we'll switch the fuel supply back over to the main tank. So that's the, the process of everything we're gonna go through. And uh, this is gonna be a crazy, crazy scary engine. Yeah, it's quite a bit more amperage yeah. than Eight. what we'd normally see on the other Swewin engines because of the dual igniter. Two plugs.
That's good. Yeah. Now we've got a lot of air bubbles. That's really exciting. In there. Let's that's see what happens. I think that's almost exactly the same. Alright guys, so we're going to try another restart just using the regular valve because the, the big dragon's tail you saw is probably from the amount of air bubbles that was in there. It was absolutely full. So we'll start it up again and just use the, uh, the valve itself and, uh, and do a restart that way. It was hard to get to shut off. <laughs> All right, great time in the video, guys, to give a shout out to everybody who has donated to the shop build. That's where we were doing the testing of this engine. Uh, it's in progress right now, and uh, we are waiting on our, our garage doors or our, our vehicle doors or car, car doors, if you want to call them that, and uh, just waiting for some final touches. But when those garage doors show up, we'll be vacating our temporary shop space and moving into the shop. So thank you to everybody who has donated to the cause. Uh, if you are interested in donating, all the links are down below in the video description. And uh, we appreciate donations, big or small, but thank you to everybody who has donated. Now, let's talk about this thing. This is an absolute beast. Um, I... I'm going to be nicknaming these 300 engines from Sweewinds the Beast, absolutely. Uh, probably going to change my website where you can buy this engine, so lightersideofrc.com. Uh, we are a full dealer for uh, Sweewind engines, but uh, this engine will forever, 
from now on going forward be known as the beast. Now, um, I forget the exact number that we got, but it was like, I'll, I'll post it here, but 62.8 pounds or 62 pounds, we'll just say 62 pounds, um, amazing number. What I was expecting, so generally at our elevation, so if you have a 300 series engine, uh, you are gonna get 66 pounds of thrust is gonna be your normal at sea level at 15 degrees Celsius. We generally see about a 15 to 20% decrease in thrust uh, based on the temperature obviously, but let's just say minus 15%. Uh, so I was expecting somewhere in the range of about 57, 58 pounds, 56 pounds of thrust. Um, we, sur we surpassed that by a lot. Now, one of the coolest things about this engine was the... So I'm just going to my YouTube page and looking up the test of the 220 engine. So the 220 engine that we tested uh, previously used 789 milliliters per minute at, 100, at max RPM. Um, this used one liter of fuel in one minute and I think six or eight seconds, I can't remember what the test was, but uh, phenomenal fuel consumption results with this engine. Now, one of the things about this engine is we are putting this in the Huracan aircraft, which I built for myself. Uh, you're not gonna be flying this thing at full throttle very often at all. So the fuel consumption should be absolutely amazing on this engine. Well, so let's talk about the, the dragon's tail or the big flame that we had during our test when we ran out of fuel and switched over. So what had happened was generally I'll, sh I'll, I'll switch the fuel over and, uh, and do the, the valve, but what I did was let the turbine suck in the air from the one liter fuel tank, and it basically absolutely filled all of the fuel lines with air. So when I switched over to the main fuel tank and it went to the restart mode, it was basically dealing with a, a full air-filled system, like unbelievable. But as you saw during the second run, the startup was way quicker and also the, the restart, it was really difficult to get this engine to turn off. So I can't remember the exact time, but I turned the valve off for about two seconds, turned it back on, the engine wouldn't quit. Again, about two seconds, a little bit longer, wouldn't quit. And I basically had to turn it right off, leave it off for the engine to shut down and it restarted no problem. So very, very impressive engine. Now, some of the basic findings, any other 300 class engine out there, the diameter of those engines, they're all about the exact same size as this one. So they're all about 130-ish millimeters. The Swewin is actually one of the shortest engines out there. Most of the other engines, if you look them up, uh, dimension-wise, they're about two inches longer in the length. So pretty significant uh, when you're talking about this size of engine, it's a big engine. But uh, I'm really excited to put this engine in the Huracan and of course fly it as well too. So. So that is basically the end of this turbine test video. Guys, if you have a need for a 300 series engine or any of the amazing Swewin engines, don't forget to check out our website list, uh, link to the websites listed down below. If you have any questions, please list them in the comments below. You can also reach out to me by email, thelightersideofrc at gmail.com, and uh, I can answer any questions for you that way as well too. But amazing engine. If you get one of these or any of the Swewin engines, guaranteed you will not be disappointed. Uh, I've loved every one of these engines that I've tested, used, put in my aircraft, put in customers' aircraft. They're absolutely awesome. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this test video. We will see you in the next video.